Well, it says that we're live, Glenn. Oh, that's great, Clara. I'm glad you uh, you joined us today. It's too I bad just, Larry couldn't make it. Oh, he's he's just lazy. He doesn't want to do these live chats anymore. Yeah. Are you over there to give him the massage? or? Are you, oh, you know? oh, no, 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 because Molly would be very, very upset. Oh, okay. All right, so you're just a friend. I am just a... Well, a very special friend. Let's okay, just say cool. that. Yeah, I don't want Molly to get the wrong idea that you're, you know, no, there's you no found hanky, somebody. There's no hanky panky going on here. Okay, I just I want know. to make sure. Because is there anything on underneath that robe? Well, I bet you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just check things. Hey, Tell when you're something. done with Larry, can you come over to my place for a while? Oh, Glenn, stop it. Uh, tell us about your Bob Dylan concert that you saw. Oh, it was great, man. I really like Bob Dylan. You got you guys look alike, actually. I thought maybe you were Bob, like maybe Bob's wife or something. You kind of I'm not same related age. to him at all. No, no, yeah, yeah. I had a great time at the concert. Uh, Adrian saying hi, Larry, but Larry's not here today. It's Clara and Glenn Kelly from the basement. Clara's gonna, Clara's gonna tell us all about growing old gracefully. She looks so a, a ravishing beauty at her age. Well, a lot of people are surprised when I tell them that I'm 48 years old. They don't, they don't believe it. Wow. Do you use a uh, some kind of a creams or anything for your, that complexion? You look so beautiful. No, I just drink a hell of a lot of wine. <laughs> That's great. Are you excited about the Beatles? Uh, I'm really not a fan of music. Yeah, I guess. Oh, not a fan of music, or no, no not at all. Eh? Did you did you used to watch the Golden Girls on TV? I never had a television set. Oh, you've never. Oh, yeah, no. you're too old even for television. This is too much. Okay. I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh. ah! Oh, oh, that's scary. Oh, oh, it's low. Uh, it's oh. just so hot. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this isn't freaky, freaky at all. Some old lady, lady Larry's Larry. face fuchsia tongue. And <laughs> uh, uh, happy Halloween, everyone. Yeah. I'm wearing my scary face too today. So seriously, tell us about because you know, unless people have seen the video, well, tell I've us. Had, like Larry, over I've had over uh, one hundred thousand views on my Bob Dylan review. So I've wow, that's you. pretty good. Yeah, um, yeah. Saw Bob Dylan on Thursday night. You know, it. I've never been to a concert where I'm actually enjoying it while I'm watching it, but like three days later, I'm I'm picking out all these special moments going, you know, I might never see Bob again. This is like, that was a really special thing, or this was a really special, it's really, a, I've almost had an emotional uh, time uh, regurgitating it all in my head here. But yeah. uh, if that's the last time I see Bob, boy, it was special. Yeah, He was great. So you you couldn't take a picture or anything? No, no, they, they, uh, it was one of those deals where no cameras, that's, that's no, good. Cameras, or no cameras, right? they locked them up in a bag, right? Good. You can carry it yeah. in, in a locked bag. And then I like that. Yeah. 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 Be, because other, like if they didn't do that, you'd see everybody with their phones, right? Yeah. Although I was on a link today on a website where somebody did film the last song every grain of sand and it's uh, up on a website and uh there's a picture of bob and uh, the guy told the story he said at the end of it they they um caught him and the bob dylan's handlers came over and took his phone off him and uh he had an apple watch and he had a thing on his watch where you could find your phone. You know, you get those programs where you can source your phone. So he found out where the phone was. And he went and knocked on a door, did something. And one of Bob's handlers come out and said, yeah, the phone, your phone was in the garbage. They took it and threw his phone yeah. in the garbage. Well, And he I got mean, it back. <laughs> in a way, like, you know, just, just 
follow the rules, right? That's what I say. Yeah. I agree 100%. If the, yeah. Give the man some respect, for God's sakes. Yeah. Was Dylan touring Canada in the Yes, yeah. he did. I saw him in 88 at uh, O'Keefe Center or the Sony Center or what, the Hummingbird Center, whatever they call it now. Yeah. I think he toured quite a bit, actually, in the 80s. And uh, how did uh, your nephew? He loved it. Yeah, he liked it too. Yeah, he was. Yeah, it's crossed off his bucket list. Yeah, he enjoyed it. It was good. Yeah. Well, so, what was the biggest surprise for you, song-wise? Um, was there anything, or I don't know if there was any surprise because I was expecting him. Like, I mean, it's called the Rough and Rowdy Ways Tour, so I knew he was going to do most of that. I did try and stay away from all the published set lists and everything from the other shows. So uh, was there any songs? Might have surprised that he didn't do a few more classic songs. If anything, yeah. it was a surprise when he left out. But he played 18 songs, and he doesn't talk at all. Like, he yeah, he finishes a song, and then he goes right into the next one. Like, yeah. I mean, it's like listening to a record. It's like big, 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 <laughs> yeah. it, which was pretty good because you got a ton of music. Yeah. Two hours, 18 songs, and the songs does, were Does he introduce oh. the band? Yeah, at one point he introduced the band. That was all he said. Yeah. And was there an encore? No. Oh wow. No, that surprised me. Oh yeah. Yeah, but but then I thought about it, man. The guy is eighty-two years old. He just yeah. gave us like uh, and, and, music for two hours. And that's the thing, though, with encores. It's like so. It's just in a way, it's phony, right? Because most bands they leave the stage, and you know they're going to come back. Like, yeah. why leave the stage? Just yeah. <laughs> Do no, the encore great. while you're on stage. Finished with a harmonica solo on Every Green of Sand, and that was just like the perfect way to end it, as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Looking back, it was great. Ricardo Roth, have you seen the latest Now and Then promo on the Beatles YouTube page yet? Yeah. I have not. Yeah, it's today. It's just a short little clip. I'm dying to talk about this. Yeah, well, I've got some comments. I'm actually, I might do a video on it. because You know, they're not all negative, but some of these are negative. It's like... Uh, and you get your typical red and blue releases again. Yet more proof Beatles fans are seen as cash cows. Beatles were not a great live band and a studio band reliant on overproduction and overdubs. <laughs> I saw that guy. I saw that comment. What a, what a, why was he even on your channel? On Beatles. Beatles. Yeah. I, so he, that, it's unfair to say the Beatles were a bad live band because supposedly when they played in. They Hamburg, didn't have the greatest equipment. To be in when they were in Hamburg, they just rocked the, the, yeah. the people and, were nuts. And the uh, on and, the rooftop, they were great. And we never got a chance to see them. Unfortunately, they quit touring before tours became a big thing. Yeah, yeah, they, they would play like 20 minutes, right? Yeah, they play 20 minutes yeah. and it, and they couldn't hear themselves. Most I know, of the time. so like it's, it's really unfair. It would have been we got we got robbed of a chance to see, like, say what McCartney does now or McCartney's been doing since the 70s. You can't say those shows are bad, yeah. Imagine what the Beatles would have done, but but this what really gets me is is when they say a cash grab, it's like, well, anything any band makes, they they want to make money on it, yeah. Right, like, yeah. and you don't have to buy it is the biggest point of all. Yeah. Right. If you don't buy it, they're not going to keep making making them. Well, I, I'm at. I am of the strong opinion that I in a wait and see on this thing. I need someone. I need a bunch of people to tell me this is worth buying because yeah. to me it's just like I have. We all have all these songs. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's the exciting thing is it's going to be a remix, the older songs. Well, let's hope the only way it's going to be worth buying is if somebody comes on and says, "You've never the Beatles sound like they're in your living room. It's incredible." Yeah. But I don't think that's going to happen. And I don't see it on Amazon yet. I I looked today before we come on. Yeah, it's on, and they got a price tag for it. A thousand and sixty-seven dollars. Well, I'm gonna get two copies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's insane. Saw Dylan about a dozen times with Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers back in 1984. Was my favorite with Tom Petty. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, Glenn, did you listen to the plea in my video? Did you give the Stones a try? Larry, help me here. No, I've 
No, it's up to him. You, you have no interest in the new album. I've listened to a bit of it on Spotify. I'm telling you right now, it's a dust collector. Talk to me a month from now and tell me how often you're playing that new Stones album. I say you're not playing it at all. Bands should still play their hits live. No, I don't. Uh, well, I don't think so. I don't think they need to. Richard, I have. It was pretty interesting to hear them working on it during the anthology. What's that all about? I don't know. Glenn, he didn't do Murder Most Fun. No, he didn't do that. That's the only song he didn't do. That's kind of an added bonus disc on, on the Rough and Rowdy Ways album. I don't really consider it part of the album. He did the whole album other than that. Paul should play his hits still. Well, he he does, but he can't play every single hit. <laughs> you know, yeah. he, he does do some, you know, some deeper cuts. And and don't you think Paul wants to come out and play something a little different every one? Like, like he does. He does. He didn't want to play Let It Be for the rest of his freaking life. He wants yeah. to play something, you know. But, like, but play then it. again, he has to play like Hey Jude, right? You have to play he a certain did. amount of songs. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Michael. Hello, Michael. Apple Music knows red and well, white equals dollar. Yeah, but green. a lot of us Beatles fans, at least for me and others, we're, we're excited about it, hearing the remix. But there's always going to be people complaining. Well, it, like I said, it's only worth it if it sounds exceptional. Hello, Mike. Hello, Mike. Larry, are you going to get the... Van Halen 11 box set the Sammy years. No, I have no interest in Van Halen at all. I like their debut album. That's about it. Yeah, they were kind of, they were just a different era. Yeah. But of rock music for me. I, I just and just to be, you know, be honest, I play the guitar better than Eddie Van Halen ever did. Of course you do. That's yeah. not... just... <laughs> Was Giles Marden involved in the remix? I believe he was, Terry. Yeah, I think he was. You should have deep cuts as well and set list change-ups. The Stones need to do a rarities night. I think if you know going in what you're going to hear, then you're, you shouldn't be disappointed. Like, if, if any Bob Dylan fan worth his salt going to that show knew he was going to do the latest studio album in its entirety and throw in a couple other songs and he's been doing one cover every show usually a grateful dead song so yeah like you kind of knew ahead of time i like that paul still plays let me roll it yeah 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 i don't know if i was a musician i'd want to be playing different stuff or doing doing things a little different that's what i like about dylan too is that he changes up the uh, arrangements of the song so yeah um hey i mean yeah he's he's doing what he wants makes it to fresh do, right yeah. <laughs> if you want to see greatest hits i mean just put on a record yep. it irritates me when bands refuse to reunite like the jam yeah but i can't blame them if they don't want to why why Force yourself to do something you you don't want to do. Well, the hardest thing in the world to do is keep a band together. I mean, I've been I've been in enough bands myself that that I've never had one that you know we did there wasn't fights and arguments and yeah. you know, we irritated with each other. One guy wants to play this song, <laughs> the other guy hates it. It's, just, it's brutal. It's, it's, oh, can you throw the money factor in the millions yeah. of dollars and then they fight over that? Yeah. You know, yeah, like, and yeah, they're, so they're saying, well, I'm doing this, right? And you're not doing that. And yeah, they, yeah, why? Well, yeah, exactly. I like, I what what I really respect about you two is they just split everything 25%, right? Which they, they really didn't have to do because, yeah. you know, Bono and The Edge mainly write the songs, but that's the way to keep a band happy. <laughs> yeah, it should be a partnership, but yeah. But then again, if one guy's doing all the work and the other guy's sitting on his ass and doing yeah. nothing. Yep. Just saying hello. I'm off to my gig for the evening. Oh, well, have a good gig, Sam. Have a good gig. 
Sam St. John. When Credence Clearwater Revival reunited for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, that was a clear picture of why they could never function together again. No, there's a lot of... Uh, they, didn't, again, they don't like each other. Respect. There was a lack of respect there in some yeah. ways and money issues and the whole bit. Yeah. And, and it's not to say John Fogarty is completely innocent. I don't believe that either. But no. still, he was basically Credence Clearwater Revival. Yeah. You know? I heard Larry's guitar playing, perfect for Halloween. It's scary. Well, thank you very much, Michael. That's, that's like a compliment. A pocket full of heap. Oh, by the way, a pocket full of heap. The latest CD exchange, Glenn gave me the very, the debut album of Uriah Heap. Look at that. That's a good song right there. Uh, can't force two people to get along. Yes, Gilmore and Waters, how that works out. Yeah. And what about the Doughheads from Supertramp? I mean, they, uh, yeah, you know, they it would be nice them again. They got back together, but they, for whatever reasons, they don't get along. Larry, are you as good as Neil Young? No. I actually love Neil Young's guitar playing. Some people don't, but. And currently working my way through the albums of Warren Zevon. I plan to do an album ranking video. Oh, that's cool. cool. Love Warren. Yeah. Favorite song. Favorite Warren Zevon song, Larry. Uh, I, I haven't heard a lot by him, but I love... Uh, the final song on Excitable Boy, the Lawyers one. Oh, Lawyers, Lawyers comes, comes in money. money. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I like uh, Desperados Under the Eaves. I don't know if you heard that song. That's a great song. Motorhead is awesome, the rock beast. I don't. I've never heard a Motorhead song in my life. No, that would hurt Glenn's ears. Alex. Oh, I'm going ahead. See, he's Alex is the same. Yeah. Yes, our, our good friend Randall Nelson. Nelson. That's his favorite one, too. It's Grant's Rock Warehouse. Wow. I just did a video a few days ago with him on Sparks. Yeah. Yeah. What's the name of the guy who, who has Grant's Rock Warehouse? Grant, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tim. <laughs> nice. Shane B. My favorite Zevon song is Splendid Isolation. See, I don't know these songs. Oh, yeah, yeah that's I, a great I love the two. Rolling the headless Thompson Gunner's yeah. great. Richard Davies sort of got the short end of Super Tramp, but he did sing lead on Bloody Well, right? So come on, that's not bad. Dan, did, yeah, I no, I, I just don't know why, why they split up. I've never heard it. Well, he didn't. He's got his solo career, and I guess he's happy. I love you Super know. Tramp, and that would be like my number one band to reunite would be Super Tramp. Dan, Larry, I know you like Genesis. What's your feeling about Peter Gabriel's solo? I I love the early Peter Gabriel solo albums, but no interest in Phil Collins, his solo career. I am dying to hear Phil, uh, Peter Gabriel's new album. It should be coming out soon. Hey, Dan. Grant, if you want to come on, just let me know. I'll send you the link. And also, uh, uh, the Heap guy. Who? Pocket full of Heap. Beer and vinyl. Yeah, I got to watch that. Sea of Tranquility. Cool. I've always wondered, Grant, if Sea of Tranquility has ever heard of Sparks. I, I don't think... He's more of a heavy metal guy. You know Sea of Tranquility at all, Glenn? Mm, yes, I know the channel. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, well, we're not very happy, are we, Glenn? Yeah. Glenn. You think you are, Sam St. John? Yeah. My mind is melting. I think because Houses of the Holy is getting tons of play at my place, and it's now number one ahead of physical graffiti for now. Wow. I like Houses of the Holy, but no way it would ever be yeah. number one ahead yeah. of physical graffiti. I haven't been on a Zeppelin kick for a while. I need to do that. Yeah. Look what Larry gave me to listen to. <laughs> and you haven't listened to it yet. I haven't listened to any of them yet. <laughs> we'll sneak them in one at a time as we go yeah. on. And Glenn gave me David Gilmore. I have played this. I I've actually played album. them all. I've played this one three times. Oh, wow. I played this one twice. Oh. And I played this once. Oh, okay. Let's tell me where that's going to rank. I will. Yep, Cat Stevens is good. Love Cat Stevens. That's a great album, T for the Tiller, man. I mentioned our Spark show today, and Pete mentioned that he has all of the Island albums. That's pretty cool, Grant. That doesn't mean he likes them. <laughs> yeah, I've just got their albums. Love Devo. There you look, Glenn. Grant I, loves I always Devo. thought Devo was a joke, so I have never They're listened to a... anything. The only thing I've ever heard from Devo is we are not Devo. We are the, that stupid just, one. Just because a band has some a bit of humor and a bit of craziness doesn't mean they don't have talent, Glenn. That's the way you got to look at it. No, but they, they, it might mean I don't like them. I think you might if you uh, just I'm, let it go. I'm anxious to try. Just let yeah. it go. I'm gonna I'm gonna go into this with an open mind, Larry. Yep. Nick Lowe, uh, I was given greatest hits thing, and that's awesome. Yeah, Nick Lowe's awesome. Rattle that lock is amazing. It's a, a good album. of heat. It's it's I think it's Gilmore's best album. Yeah. Does he does he have any kind of like not great albums? Uh he has some that are just I don't think any I mean he's such a great guitar player and I love his vocals. He I don't think he has anything that sucks, but obviously some are better than others. I mean, I would say they're all at least average. Hmm, cool. Sea of Tranquility was my gateway into eventually finding <laughs> shows like yours. Wow. Gateway drug. Yeah, I want the, the only thing is with him, like I, I like when I watch him, but he's more of a heavy metal guy, which mm -hmm. I'm not as much. From the great state of Ohio. Yep. Yeah, I love uh, King of... That might be my favorite Elvis Costello album, King of That's America. Elvis Costello was at the Dylan show the other night. I could yeah. see him because I was in the balcony. He was on the floors, but I wish that... Because people were going he, up and talk to him. He was chatty. Yeah. It cool. would have been awesome. Yeah. So my latest CD... So I've got the residents, meet the residents. Oh. And I actually, the first time I played it, I didn't like it. So I didn't listen to it for like a month. And then I gave it another chance. And I started liking it. <laughs> you like it as much yeah, as? I, yeah, I do. Yeah. And then this one. Wow. Oh, I got to get a couple. That I got. And this was the one given to me by Paul Ayers, Duck Stab. And I love this one now. Me too. And yeah, Glenn even loves them. And the latest one I got by the residents is not available. I've only listened to it once, so I'm not sure yet, but I'm sure I'll I'll love it. Okay, so when we were in the city on Thursday, we went to Sonic Boom and I picked up a couple of used CDs. One I picked up, well, I only bought one at Sonic Boom. I, I had this on vinyl for a while and I traded it in because I wasn't listening to it. You ever heard this album, Larry? maggot brain a little bit of it yeah yep so it starts off with this real instrumental uh psychedelic guitar and then it goes into like real kind of that's it's george clinton or whatever the funk mm -hmm. guy so uh the songs are kind of sly in this family stone yep. i would call them if you like yep. that stuff you'd love this but that first track with the uh, 
instrumental guitar is awesome but uh, he he was told it. when when he did that guitar solo he was told so, something about imagine your mom dying or something or maybe she, she she had passed away so when he's playing it he was thinking of his mom really yeah i hadn't heard that story yeah and then um oh sorry yeah so when we were at leaving sonic boom they were playing some song on the over the stereo and i really liked it and i didn't know who it was and i asked the woman when i was checking it with this i said who is that and she said it was kings of leon you ever listen to them no and i really dug the song and i said uh, what what album's it on she told me the album and i didn't want to go back so when we were downtown by uh, Massey Hall on Thursday night, we were on Dundas Street, and there's this little used record store that sells used CDs and stuff off the beaten path. I can't remember what it's called now. It, it's kind of a dumpy little store. It's really small. Yeah. But um, uh, anyway, they had the CD that she recommended for $6. Mm -hmm. So it's called Kings of Leon Youth and Young Manhood. It's really like rock and guitar and kind of bit quirky. I think you'd like this one. It's mm -hmm. fairly heavy, I guess. I don't know, but I, I really like uh, It's going to take me a few lessons, but I, it's starting off like it's got potential. Yeah. I don't know if anybody out there is into uh, Kings of Leon, let me know. Yeah. yeah, hit that like button, folks, please. Thank you. Thank you, Music Talk with John. It's Bob. Hello, guys. Bob. Wow. It, it's tricky, Ricky. Seventy-seven. Hey, Larry. I just wanted to say that I haven't genuinely liked any people on YouTube for as long as I've been a fan of you and your channel, and glad we met in two thousand and eight. Geez, that was fifteen years ago now. Yeah. You guys yeah. Know? Well, I don't. I don't like anybody on YouTube either, except myself. And Larry doesn't like anybody in person either, so I'm surprised no. you met him. <laughs> now. Tricky Ricky 77. He's tall. Like I'm six foot three. I have to look up like this. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's tall. Wow. Yeah. Ever notice? Yes, sometimes I do. Records <laughs> that always sound sounded great to begin with usually get the MFSL treatment. Mm, yeah, they kind of do, don't they? Yeah, it's pretty. Well, yeah, I guess they don't want to take a a crappy recording and and try and make it sound good. I heard that Led Zeppelin is re-releasing their fourth album on clear vinyl. Have you heard about this? And do you believe it's worth the purchase? I think it's a cash grab. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly it would be really because yeah, but fans, it, if you, know, you want it just because it's on clear vinyl, then uh, cool. then buy knock yourself out. Yeah. It would be a cash grab for me. I wouldn't. Yeah. Make it brain has some wicked guitar playing. It sure does. Yeah. So does he, is there any more guitar work on the album? I'm still working my way through. I haven't heard the last couple of tracks, but um, there wasn't uh, the three tracks after there was no yeah. real noticeable guitar. So how many songs on it? One, two, three, four. I still got about two tracks. I haven't heard yet. But the last track, Wars on Ar of Armageddon, it's 10 minutes long, so there might be. Yeah. Well, I didn't say I wasn't a fan of him. I just found it hard to believe that he was in the top 10 of Rolling Stones' list yeah, of greatest guitarists of all time. I don't I mean, think he had the greatest life, but he was... I mean, I'm sure well he might have been a giant of guitar, but I mean, yeah. how influential is that guy? And he had a... I, th I think he did some Beatles song on a solo album that's pretty popular. I forget what song it was, though. Maybe somebody can let me know. The only Hazel I know is the maid on the TV show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Larry, Larry, there is a Residence album in your incoming VCLT, so hopefully you don't have... No, that's that's all I've ordered for now. I've just got the four. Thank you, I pal. I think Jean's telling you she sent you a package. Yeah. Yeah, cool. she she sent me a Black Oak Arkansas CD. I don't have any of them and some other stuff. I'll do a video for it. Thank you very much. Gene, could you send me some money? <laughs> yeah, and Glenn will buy, he'll, he'll buy, buy CDs with it on us. Yeah, I promise. Yeah. 
No, I don't glass. buy them because they're too freaking expensive. But um, I bought the last Grateful Dead thing that came out. I bought it, and one of the discs didn't play. And I returned it, and then I got the the replacement, and one of the, the discs didn't play. So I just Glenn, ignored it. The, they were playing the song, The Sounds of Silence. No. Oh. <laughs> that was their cover. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Wow. wow. Very cool. I saw them do it live. Thank you, Knucklehead Rock. That's a good name. <laughs> yeah. Snake Finger. Yeah. Yeah, there was a live, like, I don't listen to the bonus stuff on these. I, like, I just listen to the main album. But last night I was listening. And it, I didn't even know it was live, but it was so good. And the guitar work and everything. So you got to listen to the bonus tracks. Very cool. <laughs> no. To be quite honest with you, I'm not a Steve Miller fan. <laughs> he hates Steve Miller. I don't hate him. I just <laughs> don't. I don't. I just don't get it. I, uh, I didn't mind the first two albums because they were kind of more psychedelic kind of a thing, but. After Boz Gags left, I'm done. I got tons of Shuggy Otis albums. He's one of my favorite guitar players. Amazing. Shuggy Otis? Yeah. Shuggy Otis, fantastic. Yeah, it's my favorite oh, yeah. Jefferson Airplane album. One of the great albums ever. Yep. There you go, Glenn. Aha, uh -huh, Shake Heartbreak 2, very good Southern Rock. Cool. I hit the like button so much I unlike it. That's great. <laughs> yeah, that might be Grant. That might be the next album I get is the commercial album. They do 40 songs and they're each one minute long. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know if I could do that. Really? I don't know. I can do that. That's weird. I couldn't get into that. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, I don't think you need to tell us to like your videos or subscribe to your channel anymore. You have plenty. Send them to Glenn instead. Thank you. <laughs> He's got like 50,000 subscribers. I want I more. Two. I'm greedy. I got 2,000. He's got like 40-some thousand more subscribers than me. Just because he's been doing it for 20 years. And because he's really good at it. And, you know, the Leafs have been freaking awesome so far. Yeah. Five and two. They look really good. Love Blue Ash. If you like vintage power pop. So like uh, you're talking to me like a uh, big star kind of a thing. Not including the Beatles, which group or artist would you say you've listened to the most over the years? Oh. Frank Zappa. I'll listen. That's actually... That would be pretty good for a video, Glenn, right? It would. That's good. Ten, the 10 artists you've listened to the most in your life. Well, the Stones would be up there. I would say Led Zeppelin, Sparks, Frank Zappa, Captain Beefheart, and Blue Easter Cult, maybe. Man, I'd have to say Zappa, the Stones, Bob Dylan, Grateful Dead would be the first four that come to mind. Good question. The Blue Ash album is great. Blue Ash, got to check that out. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm um, kind of getting into it. I need to give it another listen. I've only listened once. How is Stevie Ray Vaughan not in the top 10 list by Trolling Stone? Well, he sure deserves to be there more than some of the others, that's for sure. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, it's Joni, just... For... In, all, in all fairness to Joni Mitchell, I absolutely love the woman, but not top 10 guitarist of all time. Yeah, but these lists, it's just to get people going to the site to click and you know, yeah, know. ads and make yeah. money. Because they're, they're happy that we're talking about it. Right? And, and who cares? Who cares what they think? <laughs> right. 
A lot of people do, Larry, because it's my most watched video over the past couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I don't know if Ohio is such a great state, Alex. What go, what's happened in Ohio that makes it so great? It's when you drive through it, it's freaking boring. Tebow's from um, Ohio. There's nothing to see there. It's got Cleveland in it. Right away, you're in trouble. Yep, I like Bob's. You got crappy hockey team in Columbus. The Cleveland Browns suck. I, I don't know what's in Ohio that's so good. Besides REO Speedwagon. You like Bob Seeger? I loved Bob Seeger in the 70s when he was out, but I I, I yeah. haven't listened to a Bob Seeger album for 40 years, I'll bet. I'm sitting in Ohio right now. Yeah, you poor <laughs> bastards. <laughs> Cheers from Columbus. Columbus. <laughs> Cheers from Delaware. Endang endangered species. <laughs> as, as rare as Ted Nugent, Ted Nugent being, being humble. humble. That's funny. Thank you, Michael Myers. Wow, Michael Myers is yeah, on wow. my live chat. He's looking you like our masks, good. Michael. He's looking pretty good. Yeah, he is. Here's my other mask here. You have to watch the, the beginning of this live chat. This is my other mask. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, you're an alien. Very good. Do you speak English? Uh, oh, that's go. for another time. Oh, it's messing up my hair. I need a haircut. No, you should let your hair grow. You'd like you do an afro thing. Look at all that gray hair coming in. You got curly hair. Why don't you do an afro? You ever had an afro in your life? No, I've never had an afro. Why not? <laughs> Jeez, like, like a. Like Noel Redding and uh, or that guy from the guy who was I should for a video just that to get gold, the views. Goldie guy from Steppenwolf. He had a who good wants movie. me to get an afro? Yeah. <laughs> Jamie King, hello guys. Sorry I'm late. My well, that's we not a very that. good excuse that your internet was down. What you got to come you up got with, here. You got to come up with a better excuse yeah. for being and your bill. Okay. Fred first has some songs a few seconds long. Wow. <laughs> oh, all right. Beer and vinyl. Uh, everybody out your channel. Alex. So Alex is an awesome guy and he just did his first video. I watched it, Alex. It was great. I subscribed. Alex is a, a awesome I might have guy. actually subscribed. Please already. go subscribe. It was a great introduction video, Alex. You did fantastic. Because it's not one of my 25 favorite Dylan songs. I do think it's a great song. But I don't think anything over out of Nashville Skyline made my list. Oh, I don't like the raspberries. That's that Eric Carmen guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't All like by myself. No, is, that, is that one of the worst songs ever written? What a wimpy piece of music that is. I like that song. By myself. Don't want to live. <laughs> oh, Lord. Bob, I'm a musician. But if I was a young guy today with what's going on in music, I don't think I ever would have picked up a guitar. I don't like any of it. Hmm. Really? None of it? No, he's just into the, like the Beatles. And that's about you know, it. Bob, you, you, you can. There's a lot of great bands out there. You got to find them, man. There's a lot of great artists. I, yeah. I'm a fan of a few current artists. Look, another one that's late, Victor. I don't know, man. What, what is your excuse, Victor, for being yeah. late? The other guy's internet wasn't working. What's yours? Yeah, Victor? better be good. And that wasn't a very good excuse. It better be better than that. Matthew, hello, hello. Matt. You late too? <laughs> Blue Ash record is in metal. By the way, we're just joking around because there's always somebody out there taking us seriously. Yeah, yeah. That somebody's <laughs> unsubscribed now because you said you gave him shit for being late. <laughs> oh, I thought Ario Speedwagon was for see. Oh, the great study of it. Yeah. So, so what you're telling me is that 
Ohio has absolutely nothing going for it. <laughs> this REO speed wagon was the only thing. I thought Joe Walsh, isn't Joe Walsh from Ohio? No, no. The James gang? I think. Vans are from North Carolina. Well, Earl, is Earl, no, Earl Scruggs is from South Carolina. Yep. I, I, I have that. Yeah, I, I like, like that it. album. You know what? I played Fire. this for the first time in months the other night. It is so good. I do it like that record. It really too. is. I haven't listened to it for a while, but I always I thought that was a good record. Yeah, I was lis listening to one track and I'm thinking, he's playing everything on the song. Yeah. It's like it's so good. When I was doing my rant about the new Stones album on my video saying I think it's a waste of money, but uh somebody challenged me and go, Well, what about the McCartney stuff he puts out? I think McCartney still puts out quality stuff yeah. that I still listen to. Yeah. And Larry's proof because he just played it. Yeah. Hi, Art. How are you? Uh, the Rock Beast, we don't have any thoughts on Iron Maiden. No thoughts. <laughs> they're, they're good at what they do. You know, I respect them, but they're just not my kind of music. Where's Larry? All I can see is Glenn and an alien. Yeah. Still? Larry in an afro. Yeah. He needs to let his hair grow in. circus but good luck ever finding that record did you see the spin poll of 100 greatest rock stars yeah and i wasn't on them elvis was 100 and tina turner paul mccartney were in the bottom also well that's what it's just stupid so who know? was number one or number two <laughs> Give us the top three it'd be interesting to see axel rose <laughs> I mean, Elvis has got to be in the top. Yeah, yeah. even if you don't that. care for oh. his music. Yeah, I mean, just the history of Elvis. Tina Turner, I could see, you know, one way or the in other the on the list. Yeah, and a big beard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. this is my big beard. Yeah. <laughs> ah, that's right. Coltrane's from North Carolina. Larry, you're funny enough. Looking Man, well. Thank you. Never mind. Larry is here. That's right. Looking. Money if low, he's correcting himself. Squirrel nut zippers. That's a painful name for a Are from North Carolina. Yeah, I've uh what I've heard by them on my Patreon when somebody gives me a song request, I do. I I, I thought that was like some dude from Africa or something. That's a band? Yeah. Oh, they're going on my embargo list. They only go one go list. <laughs> it's a stupid That's name, a right, stupid Glenn? Name. Yep. James yeah, Taylor. He's good. Oh, James Taylor. Yeah. What was I wonder? What, I'm never honest. <laughs> Eric Carmen and the Raspberries. Yeah, don't brag about that. The song Go All the Way is good. Oh, it's horrible. Jeez. It's horrible. N, I agree. N. That says it all. Yeah. Mr. Wondrous is a man of few words. <laughs> I always like that. Singer well, I use like one that. word when one letter will do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just a horrible song. As someone who isn't familiar with Joni Mitchell works, where should I think I start? you should start with. Well, Blue is considered her masterpiece, but if you're a little uncomfortable with the vocal acrobatics, like she does this soprano stuff sometimes that people it get turned off if you're not a fan. So I would start with Hey Jira, because her voice is a little deeper there. Great songs. And then go to Blue second. What, a, what about the the album before that with your court and spark which was a big yeah that's what I, I think yeah. i would say court and spark yeah that's yeah that's got a lot of hits on it yeah yeah i should yeah then people be on time yeah circle game miles of isles yeah circle game's a great song and miles of isles a uh, live album I well, that's a better excuse, bath. at least. You're in the bath. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Growing afro. 
internet slow. Well, pay your bill. Yeah. James Gang was from Ohio. Yeah, but they left. Are, are they recording an album? Uh, I don't know. The, the odd time they've been doing like uh, shows for charity and stuff. But I wish Joe would put them back together. Yeah. Overnight sensation, that's Zappa, right? No, <laughs> it's also raspberries. Well, the raspberries stole it. Doc Watson, incredible. Yep. Egypt Station is a really good album. That was a grower for me. That was like I when I first heard it, I went, mm, and then after a while, I really yeah. liked it. Would you rather pay Axl Rose to be late or just, I don't. Yeah, I'm not a Guns N' Roses guy. No. They played at the Rogers Center, though, the Sky Dome, eh, not long ago, and like to sell the place out, like 60,000 people or something. Yeah. I can't believe it. Chrissy Hine, but she left. No one stays in Ohio. So for you, Alex. And after you get a few more subscribers, you'll probably leave too. I don't like that song on that Stones album. That's I think that's one of the least my least favorite tracks on the album is the McCartney song. You do you know that one? Have you yeah. heard it? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. Really? I've only listened to it once. I didn't like it. Hmm. Oh really? I like Egypt Station's great. Uh, New was really good. Had a lot of great songs on it. McCartney three. I I think he the last three albums have been really strong. Because I don't like. It's just I don't know. It's like real sucky pop music to me. I just don't like. <laughs> I'm sorry. There. I'm sure that a lot of people love the Carpenters. God bless Karen, but. Just not my style of music. Michael Myers, I love Electric Light Orchestra. My favorite album is El Dorado and yeah, also ELO2. Out of the Blue is pretty good too. Yeah. Yeah. The great. Like Jeff Lynn, I think he, you know, if you talk about musical geniuses, he's right up there. Nina Simone. Oh, wow. So did that. you ever find another? Good, Nina. No, it wasn't Nina Simone. What was that other woman, that jazz woman recently you've been into? Hmm. The one where I was gifted that CD. What's her name? Col Coltrane. Oh, Alice Coltrane. Yeah. Did you find a two, second? I, so far, I've got two that I absolutely love, yeah. and I, I have I'm having a hard time finding another one. I'm sure there's more, but I don't want to. I don't want to buy them till I hear them, because boy, there's some weird stuff. Ye, ye, wasn't that the guy who had N last yeah, time? No, yeah. he's got ye. He, he's getting better. He's getting better. He's shy. Elvis was the first rock star. Yeah. Well, was Chuck Berry a rock star before Elvis? Well, not a rock star, but he was around before Elvis, right? Wasn't he? I think so. Like we're Little Richard, the the black dudes, like Little Richard, yeah. and who would who all? would you say like if he had to for the very maybe other viewers connect. Can answer to who was the first who who was the king of rock and roll? There's Chuck Berry, Little Chuck Richard, Berry. Jerry Lee Lewis, Elvis Presley. Who was who was who is the king of rock and roll? I think it's Chuck Berry. Yeah. Because he influenced the, the most, I think, right? I think so. And also, didn't Elvis really just take music that he was listening to that couldn't get played on the radio because it was usually by a lot of black artists and just kind of regurgitate it for a white audience. Wasn't that yeah. really the way he made his fame? Yeah, I don't know. Because it was a while before these, the real the real pioneers, the black guys could get played on the radio, on white radio yeah. stations. Little, little Richard, I don't think, gets enough respect. No, he's a monster. He was great. Yeah. yeah. I like them. I um I don't know. I really like Eddie Vedder when he does solo stuff, but I can't really. I'm having a hard time with Pearl Jam, and it's my son-in-law's favorite band. Um, I think they're allowed. I mean, let's face it. There's only so many riffs in the world, so uh, I don't know if this. I think the Stones have put out enough. Stuff that uh, 
I don't know. Yeah, Court and Spark is good. Glenn, we have 57 viewers. You know why? I think it's because I'm showing some, some oh, chest hair. I think that is too, because we had 157 before you did that. <laughs> <laughs> Hissing of Summer Lawns. Well, oh, I love that album. But I don't know if that would be a good entry point for Joni. Jerome, you're late. Yeah. Nina Simone. Nina Simone. Yeah, she's awesome. Why? There's a great documentary on Nina Simone. On, I, uh, I've seen that, yeah. She she was kind of a scary woman, too, wasn't she? Yeah. Why is Do You Want to Know a Secret and If I Fell Not on the Red Album? Did it doesn't, you know, out. people are going to complain. Like, I wouldn't have put those two songs on the Red Album either. Yeah. I thought Egypt Station was horrendous. I know. Another listen. It <laughs> took me, the first listen, I was uncomfortable with it. It grows, it's a grower. Yeah. There's some great stuff on there. Yeah. Yeah, I me mean, neither. Especially because I hate Axl Rose's voice. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven door. Wow. <laughs> yeah, the quo. Yeah. Yeah, status quo. <laughs> Nugent knows how many catalytic converts it takes to get sued fed for birth. <laughs> that guy's a loser. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I, I just have to be careful with money these days. Uh, I'm not like Glenn, you know, running out buying 10 oh, Trust me, Larry, I'm not buying week. anything. But I, I definitely want to get more cam, like the early albums. I even canceled my pre-order on the new Zappa set. Yeah. I got to wait. <laughs> yeah. Glenn she heard one of them. Glenn stuff. bought one no of them. Doubt. But I'm a huge fan of when she puts out something good. Yeah, Little Richard. Me too. Okay, so he's saying the king is Little Richard, and he's saying Chuck Berry. I say Chuck right? Berry. Have you seen any of Tina Turner's concerts on YouTube? She did a version of Proud Mary, which was real. Oh, yeah, oh, she had a hit. Course. She had a big hit of Proud Mary. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. She's one of the greats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We won't. We won't get into Buddy Holly. Was another one. I yeah, was another one. About. He he was, well, not that Chuck Chuck Berry was the same, I guess, but he, no, but Chuck Berry didn't produce his albums, did he? I always think of Buddy Holly not so much as a showman, though. Yeah. Like when I think rock star, I'm thinking like Elvis, you know, was up there wiggling the hips and Chuck Berry with the duck walk and uh, Little Richard. Yeah. Or, uh, Little Richard. Another if you see one. The footage yeah. of him back in the fifties. Oh, it even yeah. looks bizarre now, right? Imagine yeah. the shock it was oh. back then. Yeah, but he he was a brave guy. Like, he was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Larry and Glenn. Glad you both enjoy Duck Step. He's the one that gave me Duck Step. I think Glenn and you would also love fingerprints he was the guitarist that was sometimes in the residence oh his name is fingerprints yeah i've heard oh. i've heard of him for years interesting yeah cool so let, let me know what uh what fingerprints album yeah I think you, you mentioned it before so you think chuck berry good marketing marketing decision to go with Little Richard rather than Little Dick. Yes. <laughs> Chuck, Berry is, most, Larry. Chuck Berry is the father of rock and roll, but Elvis being the first rock star was the king. Fingerprints. Yeah. And Blue Ash. I got two of them written down. Yeah, I do. Well, no, I, oh, yeah, I, I, I can't I do like Nirvana. I can't do Nirvana at all. I don't get it. Chuck Berry. Yeah. Favorite Canadian prog band. Rush. Uh, Are we considering Rush a prog band? Yeah, if they were. Uh, I would say Klaatu. <laughs> I would. <laughs> I would. 
You haven't heard their album Hope, Glenn. I've heard all the Klaatu albums. You haven't heard anything. Yeah, it's a, they have just the one that calling occupant. I, I know that inside. That's out. all you ever when when I talk about calling occupants. <laughs> hey, they were the Beatles. They were. Yeah. Love little Richard. Yep. Nervous Norvus. <laughs> Nervous Norvus. Chuck Berry and Buddy Holly were performers who were great songwriters. Oh, yeah, huge. That yeah. was really inspiring to the Beatles Absolutely and the Rolling Stones. They were. Yeah. I think Buddy Holly, well, I, I'm sure uh, George Harrison was pretty inspired by Chuck Berry, but I, I think John and Paul were probably more inspired by Buddy Holly, the songwriting. And... Chuck Berry is best on guitar ever. No, he's a pioneer, man. Little Richard. There's only so many pioneers. Larry, roll up your sleeves and show off your guns. <laughs> uh, maybe later in the show. <laughs> Jeez. I'm so excited for Red Blue. The amazing release date in the U.S. is November 10th, but apparently they won't arrive until December 26th. Wow. I am not that excited yet. I got to find out how good this is. I'm not buying it until I hear... What? No one should be excited by the songs on the Red Album. If you're a Beatles fan, you have all these songs. You have them in mono. You have them in stereo. You have them on CD. You have them yeah, but but the old why version, do you need a comp? But the old versions of the stereo suck because you know the vocals are well, on. Well, that's one what I'm side. saying. But no one should get excited by this. But what songs are on it? Well, I'm excited. No, you should be excited by the production quality of the songs and the remix. That's what I mean. I but, am excited. But, but the songs themselves, it doesn't matter what songs are on it. Oh, I need a drink. Why should it matter what songs are on it? Because you have all the songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Buddy Holly. Hey you there, know, fellas. The Beatles Peter and James. Don't get me going. <laughs> Storm out. Little Richard. Yeah, that's true. Little Richard was the queen of rock and roll. Yep. Yeah. I've got a, a double CD of their, a lot of their material. I've got all their albums and I saw Cream at Massey Hall in 1968. No way. Did so. Yeah. Mr. Wondrous, Tina Chanted. Nam Mio Reg Keo on Larry King. Well, Larry must have been pretty excited. Uh, Tricky Ricky 77. Favorite movie for me is Goodfellas. Artist Godfather. is the Beatles. And song from the 70s. Oh, Sparks, this town ain't big enough for both of us, I guess. Favorite movie would be The Godfather. Favorite song from the 70s. Oh, my God. That's probably a Bob Dylan song. No, I every don't grain think so. of no. That's the eighties. Um. Oh, that's really hard. A favorite song from the seventy. I got to think about that one. How about "Cashmere" by Zeppelin? That might be with one of them. And Zeppelin. What bands are from the seventies? Who do you? Who do you kind of? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because all my all the bands I'm thinking of really start out in the sixties. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'll pick yes. Actually, Fingerprints is the album by The Residents. The guitarist is Snake Finger. Oh, Snake Finger. Okay, I'm writing that down. Does Snake Finger have any of his own albums out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what what is a, like, what would you recommend to Glenn and I for the guitarist, Snake Finger, that's like his solo work let us know yeah 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 that's uh this coming thursday coming or soon. friday right yeah i might do a i don't know how i'll do it but i might do it like a live thing i can't play the audio but i'm gonna definitely buy that yeah. that's def i'm definitely buying it because i want to have that but I'm getting the feeling it's going it's not gonna it's gonna be one of those modeling kind of John Lennon songs that same was yeah. uh, free as a burden 
it won't be a rocker. Yeah. Yep. Fingerprints. Ricky Nelson. Yeah. James, James Burton. Burton. Yeah. yeah. Great guitar player. And then Rick Ricky Nelson was great too. Yeah, that's just not my era, man. That whole grunge thing in the 90s. Thank you, Joseph B. I love Lou Reed and Glenn dislikes. Yeah, Larry, thanks Lou so Reed. much for all the Lou Reed coverage. I, I sincerely <laughs> want to thank you for that. He's he's one of my all-time favorite artists. He'd be in my top five. The Bloody Hollies, they're a great band. The Bloody Hollies. Yeah, Rush. Yeah. Some people just don't think of them as a prog band, though, mm -hmm. right? Well, Man 01, 1971 music. I am a huge fan Lou of Reed Lou is Reed. lost? Someone's like, did they call the cops? Are we looking for him? Or has there been a passed Amber away alert? 10 years ago, Glenn. Is there an Amber Alert? And I, I am a huge fan of him. I have all of his albums. Glenn's not a huge fan. Rank and review. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what band I'll be doing next, though. Rank and review. Yeah. Hmm. Who do we want? Let's uh, throw it out there. What what we, we band should do it. We like to see a rank and review from Larry. We should Wong. do a, a video on a on an artist together and rank their albums. I will do that. But you know, not like you know, we've you know, Led up and we've done all that, but I don't know. Yeah, pick one. I'm good. If you folks in chat want Larry to strip tease on a live stream, you need to send super chats. No, you're not kidding. Yeah. Don't kid. Yeah. There is a ch super chat. Like, you know, you should test it out and like send $50 and see if it works. Yeah. I'll let you know. Holy shit. I, man, we'll never get that on the album cover. I might, I might strip for fifty dollars. I tell you. Yeah, these days. Yeah, I miss me some Lou. Yeah. Yep, I like love. I wouldn't uh, say I love I love. Have a hard time with love. I, I, I appreciate it, but NFW, Mister Wondrous, is just full of long. <laughs> I don't words. know what that stands for. I don't know either. Knock knock. Who's don't there? Fear the Reaper. That's a great song from the 70s. Little Richard performances are still amazingly over the top. He must have seemed totally, yeah. Oh, yeah. He must have just freaked people out. So flamboyant, too, right? Who's there? There is a sentimental connection to Red and Blue for me. I didn't see the actual Please Please Me cover for a few years after buying Red Blue. So I associate the photo shoot with the. Yeah, there is a lot of, you know, and they had a lot of fans in the generation. Beatles there. fans grew up on those albums, yeah. right? Like if you yeah. came of age in the seven in nineteen seventy or on, then the blue red albums have a real special place in yeah. your heart. People can't understand my love for Equator and Profile. Yeah, I love those Sparks songs. Sparks. And <laughs> Lulu. Lulu, yeah. That's Lou Reed and who? Metallica. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Snake Fingers' first album, Chewing Hides the Sound album. I'm writing it down. Chewing Hides the Sound. Last Great American Whale. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. yeah like I, I, like I said, I listened to this for the first time in a while, and it is just so good. Egypt Egypt Station needs 10 listens. Yeah, I liked it right away. I just noticed there's a three to four album gap in my jazz section. Time to buy some records. Okay, go ahead and do that. You need Keep to buying. get, for, for jazz rock, you need to get Coliseum's Valentine's Suite. Yeah, that's a good album. John, you need to get The Epic by, uh, what's his face, Washington... Uh, Oh, Kasami, Kamasi Washington, the epic. You got to get that album.
Yeah, I just was too. I don't know. I just it just passed me by. I was not in the. Yep. Renaissance. I, yeah. Yep. They're good. They were good. When does the Canadian sub muffin tea back come out? What is that? I don't know. <laughs> I'll pay Larry to not strip. Well, well there you go. Send him money. <laughs> I'll not strip for money too. Yeah. The Everly Brothers, yep. Yeah. Great. What a big influence on the Beatles. Victor is back. I think he's I'll, back. Or I'll be back. He's really back. I should, I should do one of these, one of these live chats every Sunday, like, you know, every Sunday, right? Are you yeah. free most Sundays? Most Sundays. Unless I, well, yeah. As I'm awake. <laughs> you have to have your nap. Yeah. Well, I, I'm a working man now, Larry. Well, yeah, that's right. Uh, in the Court of the Crimson King, followed by Islands. I like Discipline, too. I have that. Discipline's great. There's so many good ones. Uh, Tom, yes, he was. He was Supposedly. amazing. Not a Prince fan. I like certain... He's, he's a guy like I could just have a comp and listen to like a few songs. I, I can't listen to his albums. <laughs> and there were two back... It's for male strippers. Oh, never mind. <laughs> John, you seem to know an awful lot about male strippers. Yeah. Well, I saw Coliseum live last month and they played the title track. Yeah, that's pretty Whoa. cool, eh? That they're still yeah. rocking. Would Clem Clemson still be around? Yeah, he's in the band. Oh, man. Yeah. First, King Crimson is essential. It is essential. You two are fun to watch. Mo like then they have to kind of like it's yeah. such a positive thing, and then mostly. Yeah, like, I know we're all negative. Sometimes we're not fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's when 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 Glenn's talking. That's what why they had to put in mostly. <laughs> Sometimes it's painful. Oh yeah, really, that's awesome. Looking awesome, album. Yeah. Now we're talking music. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to wear a thong to wash dishes? <laughs> so, Glenn, tell us what video did you just post today that I just I posted watched? My, I, I mean, I, this has been Bob Dylan month for me. I uh, went to Tulsa. I bought well. I bought tickets to see him. Then I went to Tulsa to the Bob Dylan Center. Then I got. I found uh, the the deluxe edition of the Cutting Edge. Then I went to the show. So today I've been doing Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. So today I posted my top twenty five favorite Dylan songs. My favorite Bob Dylan song is probably Series of Dreams. Yeah, that's a great song. Yeah. Oh, some look at Christopher. He's giving me a plug. I usually do a watch party with an online lady friend on Sundays around 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So might not make Sunday lives, darn. Oh. Well, Sunday lives are at three, though. Yeah. Come on, Art. Yeah. Top 25 Bob Dylan. Boom, Dylan songs. Check it out. Islands. I haven't heard. Yeah, I love Islands. That song, Islands, is just so beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's that, that's the album you gave me, right? I like to do that one. And I did like, yeah. It's very melodic, that one. Yeah. And li Lizard is a little weird, isn't it? Yeah, Lizard's a bit. Yeah. yeah. Is that the one with John Anderson on it? Mm, I think so. Yep. And from Two of my favorite shows of all time. Just tell them the truth, Glenn. <laughs> so when, uh, I don't know how old you were when you got a colored TV in your house, Larry, but we were late. 
Yeah, we were. Uh, it would be nineteen. I bet you I didn't get one till nineteen seventy. Oh yeah, you were late then. Yeah, so we used. I used to walk over to the pla on Friday nights. The Man from Uncle was my favorite TV show, and I used to walk over to the outdoor mall. There was a Simpsons department store there, and I used to go in the TV department and go and turn up the sound and watch the Man from Uncle in color. <laughs> in the store until they told me to move along. <laughs> yeah. I think it's it's good that they made it, but I guarantee you won't be listening to it a month from now. Let me know, Eric. A month from now, tell me if you're playing that more than you're playing Let It Bleed. I say no. Thank you, Shane. Yeah, Series of Dreams, great song. Three Eastern with 12 noon here. Well, you're in. There's not that big a time difference in uh, the Carolinas, is there? That's weird. Hmm. Julie Driscoll. I love Julie Driscoll. The, uh, yeah, the, uh, the R&B stuff that she did with uh, Brian, uh, Brian Auger is incredible. Yeah. Valentine's Sweet. Coliseum. Yeah, that's one I have rock that the Kamasi Washington is a is a jazz album. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Coliseum is awesome. In the wake of Poseid, it does have currency. Both shows she's in her late thirties had never seen them. She loves both shows now. Wow, very cool. The Avengers was so good. Oh, Pleasant Valley Picker. He's in BC. Oh. <laughs> yeah, let us know next week. Uh, he, he, he'll come back next. Yeah, I'm not listening to that in, anymore. Yeah, I got nothing against the album. I'm not dissing it in any way. I'm just saying I know from my own listening habits where it'll end up. So I'm not buying it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But what's kind of weirder is the way the Beatles went from Love Me Do in, what, 1963, was that? Two. 1962. And then, like, even three years later with, like, Norwegian Wood and all that. Like the oh, growth. it's incredible. The growth. It's, it'll and never then, be equaled. I, di I didn't even realize this until kind of recently. The Beatles broke up. When the Beatles broke up, all of them were still in their 20s. I know. <laughs> I know. They put out all that amazing music. It's like, what did you do with your life? Yeah. A step, <laughs> an eight-year span. Yeah. They, they went from that to that. That I mean, yeah. it's just incredible. But it's, you couldn't. It'll never happen again. There you go, Glenn. Gary Moore. I didn't know Gary Moore was on Coliseum, too. He's such a great guitar player. Or was such a great guitar player. Yeah, seven years. Yeah, it's a it's incredible, it really is. And just the whole personal story of the Beatles, like everything that happened to them as kids and growing up, like you could not write a fictional novel. Yeah, that story is just so unbelievable. It's un it's crazy. Yeah, and, and to think, all four of them grew like they were in the very same place. Yeah. I know. It's just all magic. It was just yeah. magic. Yeah. It'll ne never to be repeated. Ever. I'm going to start freaking out, Glenn, but it might be the wine. Yeah. It's unbelievable, that story. Well, thank you very much, Pleasant. I think he's talking about me. Yeah. Thank you. I don't think you liked that album, did you, Glenn? I don't know if I've heard it. I think you did. I think that was the one for one of the CD exchanges on. Oh, well, maybe British I didn't Record like it then. Channel. Yeah, and okay. I don't. You never got into it. Yeah. Well, they're they're the ultimate. Yeah. And then you know I'll get a comment on one of my Beatles videos once in a while, calling them they were just a boy band. It's like go away. Yeah. <laughs> you're not. You know. You don't. You're not really paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's the growth of the work. Like I mean, and I'm not saying you can. I'm not saying you can't have a, a love a, a band besides the Beatles more. That's fine, 
But I'm just saying. You got to respect. Yeah. What they did. Yeah, Gary Wright was great with the spooky tooth and then his own stuff. Yeah. And a big, good, big friend of John uh, George Harrison's. I think him and Gary Wright were pretty good friends. Yeah, I want to hold your hand to helter skelter in four, like four years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's actually crazy how, I mean, Beatles aside, how rock music went from where it went from from nineteen sixty two to nineteen sixty nine. I mean. You know, well, and and from from Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas to Jimi Hendrix and Zeppelin and, <laughs> and and even you know the Sgt. Pepper album. Even I sometimes don't realize how influential that was when it came out, because before that it was kind of song based, like singles based, right? Yeah. The the music. Community. It was all forty fives, yeah, and then yeah, it was correct. like album based after Sergeant Pepper. Yeah. Oh, this is a good question, actually. Wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> I I actually did a video years ago where I I the video was just on on that song, and I I read the lyrics. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like the greatest lyric writer of them all, right? <laughs> That, that whole album though i don't get it. like it's almost like a children's album no that's what album's that on that's on i really like that album that that wiggle yeah. wiggle is the only bad song oh, on okay. it okay yeah. yeah two great songwriters and two great singers in the same band yeah and they pushed each other to greatness yeah unbelievable Sergeant, now you're talking a pocket full I of I didn't heat. realize they were released on the same day. Two of my favorite albums. I did I didn't know that. Hmm. And see, and also released on the same day was David Bowie's debut album. That kind of stupid one. Oh, really? Yeah. I'd heard Freak Out, a friend uh, a friend I, I had who was into Zappa really early and turned me on to Freak Out. And I I liked it because it was so different and everything. But when Absolutely Free came out, that's the one that sold me on Zappa. Yeah. When I heard that, that was it, man. I loved yeah. that freaking album. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it exactly. That's That was a huge influence on Zappa. Yeah. Please check your Wi-Fi network. Stop it. What's your fave record cover ever? Uh, quite a few. King Crimson, for sure. Yeah, part of the Crimson King. Yeah, seeing that in the record store, not knowing, but it certainly <laughs> was an eye-opener. Sparks, Kimono My House for C Celia. Um, Sergeant Pepper has yeah. to be up there. Who's Next? <laughs> there, there's so many great album covers. Okay, under the red. Yeah, no, actually, I take it back. That isn't that. That's not. That's one of his weaker albums. Yeah. 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 I, I think I started losing interest in new, new artists by you know by the late '80s. Oh, really? Well, that's interesting. I John know Kennedy's that. assassination. Uh, that's the, I believe, the second Can album or third. Nope, I haven't heard it yet. I don't want to listen to, like, I could listen to them on Spotify, but I want to wait and, and buy them sometime. <laughs> Bad Out of the Hell oh, too. That's Glenn's that. favorite album, the original Bad Out of Hell. Oh, I'd like to rid the earth. This like that'd be my job in life to just go through and rid the earth of the Bad Out of Hell albums. Now, the one he's holding up there, Uriah Heap, Demons and Wizards. Like, that's a good album. Cover. Yeah. 
Disraeli Gears is one of my favorite album covers too. Yeah. How much time on average do you spend listening to music? I would say at least I usually listen at night. Three hours at at least. I was going to say three hours for me too. Three hours and on weekends longer. If I've got nothing to do on a Saturday, Sunday, I'm listening like probably for six hours. I love Planet Waves. Great record. Aladdin Sane, yeah. I agree. Mux and the disco Eric. I don't know. Yeah, but Ralph, you'd be that would make you ten years older than you are now, and you, you know. Do, do you ever get anybody commenting on your channel about, oh, you got to listen to newer music? Well, because I listen to a lot of new music, I think. Yeah. yeah. So I'm pretty open minded to listen yeah. to anything new, but as long as it's not like rap or, or it's in the rock vein or pop vein, I I, I kind of like to hear it. No, no, but but I I do listen to Spotify to to check out some music and uh, and if I like it enough, I will buy it. I've only listened to Spotify. Well, when we were doing our CD exchanges, where we had to listen to stuff, I, I would listen to because I had to. But um, yeah. normally, I'll listen to like ten seconds of a song. <laughs> That's it. Is Glenna Swifty? No, That's, I've always wondered that. A lot of respect for the woman, what she's accomplished, but not at all. My friend Rob is Northern Revolutions is a big Swifty, though. And Rob just passed 900 subscribers, so congratulations, buddy, if you're listening. Eric, the great thing about great music is that no matter when you were born, you can listen to it today, yeah. It's timeless. Music is timeless. Not every not every song is timeless, but I I still hate it when uh, somebody will talk about an album from the sixties, seventies, and say it's dated. It's like it doesn't really make any sense. Like, you know, some people might say Sergeant Pepper is dated. It's like, yeah. no, it isn't. It was created. It's so it's going to sound like sixty seven, right? But I think some albums stand are timeless and stand like the test of time and don't yeah, sound I guess they sound fresh still yeah I think that's mm -hmm. I think dated the word dated takes a, a negative connotation and shouldn't it, it it sounds like an insult but it shouldn't be what's wrong if something's dated and it sounds like it's from the 60s because the 60s yeah. were a great era of music yeah, so yeah that's yeah. really a compliment yeah Proto Proggers were spoiled by the magnificent anchoring music, which could not be topped very easily. I liked late 70s. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. New Wave and something here. Love classic rock too, of course. I wish I had YouTube when I was a kid, watching fave bands anytime you wish. Yeah, I wish I had started my YouTube channel when I was like 18. That yeah, would have been cool. Nice if we had internet <laughs> stuff when we were kids. Oh my God. Yeah. You get the new Sgt. Pepper album in yeah. 1967 and do a video. <laughs> if we had the internet when I was kids, I wouldn't have been so fascinated with the uh, um, Simpsons and Eaton's catalogs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and National Geographic. <laughs> so much great music only came to late due to YouTube. Back in the 60s and 70s, radio stations spoon-fed us what we're... Yeah. I was never a fan of radio. I, I rarely listened to it. 60s, I was a huge radio guy. 70s, done. Yep, Jeez, Bob's movies. old. Yeah, Bob, you are old. <laughs> You're not like us at all. 
It's uh, my party and I cry if I want to. It's Judy's turn to cry. Judy's turn. Uh, yeah, and it, it, it shouldn't take on a negative connotation. It should be a compliment if something says it's dated. Yeah, it is used as a put down. Yeah. Yes. Love Hendrix. You saw Hendrix. I did. Glenn saw Hendrix in 1969 at Maple Leaf Gardens. When he was still alive, right, Glenn? He was still alive, yeah. <laughs> For another year. No, but but it is like you said, you're just seeing him in concert thinking, oh, you'll see him again in a few years. And yeah, you don't really know at the time, gone. right? Any, any concert, anything you do in the present, you don't realize yeah. that it. Yeah. You know what's going to happen in the future. Who knew Jimmy was going to yeah. die so tragically? And so you don't, you don't go. Oh, I, I got to watch every second of this because you know I got to remember it because he's going to die. <laughs> yeah. So, so of all the early concerts you saw, you've seen like Blind Faith and uh, Led Zeppelin. What what is the like from the early concerts? What, what's the one you remember the most? Cream is, uh, well, yeah. Cream in 60. I really vividly remember Cream on stage. I can still close my eyes and see that yeah. concert. That really stuck with me. And uh, Blind Faith was another one. What a great concert that was with Delaney and Bonnie and Rory Gallagher and Taste and amazing. Zeppelin. I still I still vividly remember uh, Jimmy with uh, Bo. Yeah. Doing the yeah. Dazed and Confused thing. And, so I guess they didn't have like a light show or anything at all. No. Yeah. yeah. And do you do you remember like the the sound? Like was it really super loud or? It was pretty. It was pretty loud. Yeah. yeah. I don't recall it being definitely definite deafeningly loud. Yeah. But yeah. And back back then it was punchy. Did the did they do encores back then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Do you do you remember what the, the last song was? Zeppelin? No. Yeah. No. I don't. Glenn does. I don't. I play my main instrument is five string banjo. I can play a little bit of guitar and uh I played bass guitar for a while in a band, but I haven't played bass for a while, so I don't know if I should say I play bass or not, but my, I'm a five-string banjo player, really. By I went to get a haircut today, and all this gray hair was falling on the floor. I could figure out where it was. Yeah, oh, yeah. Rub it in. Yeah, look at this. Yeah. 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 He was uh, an alien, huh? I didn't know that. Larry, isn't Jimi Hendrix with us today? There's Jimmy there. He really was an alien. I'll never get why folks argue over music. I agree. Yeah. Oh, I like arguing about music. That you know, because I think if people don't like what I like, then they, they don't have any taste. No, but but what really like most comments don't like if it's a negative comment, it doesn't bother me. The ones that bother me is like if I do a my top ten favorite songs, and then somebody will say, "Where's Stairway to Heaven?" It's like it's not in my top ten. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, but you're promoting a conversation. They're going, well, yeah. "Stairway to Heaven should be in your top 10. Uh, I've heard of them. Have you heard of? Yeah, them? I, I've heard of Big Rock. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're a pretty good rock band. Um, yep, I like. Uh, Glenn loves XTC and so oh, yeah. right. and Squeeze is good. Freaking passionate XTC guy. Worst light show ever was Lighthouse in the 70s. Oh. What was your favorite and what was your worst concert? My favorite concerts were anytime I saw Sparks and Paul McCartney in 2010 and I got to meet the band backstage. My favorite concert I, was, I don't have a uh, worst. Stones in 72 at Make Leaf Gardens with Stevie Wonder opening. And my worst 
concert ever. Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson. <laughs> God, it was boring. And I like Willie. I was just really bored. <laughs> Uh, I think you're wrong. You don't no, need, the you need the first, first one. The first Zeppelin and three? Come on, Dan. Shake your head, Dan. I need you to um, leave the chat. Ah, oh, who was the guitarist? They played with Leslie West for a while. Was that it? Good night, Larry, Molly, Glenn. Thanks for the last two years. Thank you, Celia. Well, you're not going to come. So is she gone for good? She's gone. Yeah. She's out of here. Two years. Yep. I know, I know you might be joking, but I actually like early Ted Nugent. I would say I like his early music. I can't uh, stand the man. Like Cat Scratch Fever, that album, or oh, Free For All. Horrible. <laughs> I'll blow it out your ass, Art. <laughs> <laughs> no. She'll be back. Okay. Okay. That's good. Well, are we almost done? I want to eat soon. Stranglehold is great. Yeah, he's a great guitarist. I admit. Who's that? Ted Nugent. Guy from? Who's he from? Ted Nugent. Oh no, he's he's awful, and he's such an ass. He's got it's politics, or he's just a scumbag of a human being. Hey, he's Larry. Shoot himself with a bow and arrow. I bought the Pet Sounds record last weekend, and I love it. Do you really like that? Yeah, I think it's one of the best albums ever. I mean, it's one of the over most overrated album in the history of music. I'm full of uh, <laughs> vinegar. Vinegar today. Two guitars, but I forget. For for that cream for Ginger Baker and Jack Bruce. Oh wow! Yeah, not a fan of Judas Priest. Yeah, I just I respect not my era. Sorry. Worst album you've ever heard. The Eagles uh, out of Eden or whatever it is. The one they did that, that they sold at Walmart. That's just horror. East of Eden, is it? East of Eden or somebody's Eden. I don't know. Bye, Bob. Bob, Thank go you. have a nap. Bob's old. Yeah. Bob needs a nap. Go lay down, Bob. Yeah. I saw Sparks in New York City during the kimono propaganda indiscreet era. Right. Awesome, Joseph. Wow. What was the first year you saw Sparks, Larry? 1982. And then I didn't see them again for 31 years. Wow. <laughs> yeah, cat scratch fever. Tony Here we go. Tony's a smart man. Oh, uh, see, I wish I would have seen Bowie. Cheap trick were the worst. They were awful. Wow. I'm going to keep this comment up for a few minutes. Thank you, Steve Bartley. He, you know, Larry is the best YouTuber. I agree. Thank you. Remember to thumbs up this live stream. I appreciate it. And remember to subscribe to Glenn Calloway from the basement. When you're full of vinegar, have fish and yeah, chips. Larry, if all your subscribers that watch your channel came over and subscribed to my channel, wouldn't I have 43,000 subscribers? Yeah, you should. So most of them don't pay any attention. Yeah, to but you. Glenn, I've been on YouTube for almost 18 years. I think, sad to say, some of my subscribers are dead. <laughs> <laughs> they are. I know of some. <laughs> they passed away. It's not really that funny, Glenn. <laughs> but they're dead. <laughs> They're not going to like my videos anymore. <laughs> That's a good rule of thumb to live by. When you're yeah. full of vinegar, have fish and chips. I saw Sparks in Metal Shop. Metal Shop. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> yep, 
Yeah. The Northern Pikes. At I the drove Horseshoe by the Horseshoe Valley. the other day with my nephew Jack and showed it to him. Said, yeah, the Stones played there. The police played there. I saw, uh, who have I seen it? Uh, I saw Amy Helm there. I saw uh, Colin Linden there. And Rick Danko came out. Wow. Oh, man. Uh, lowest of the low I've seen there a couple times. Yeah, it's a great venue. Legendary. There's a book out you can buy in the history of the Horseshoe Tavern, which is absolutely fantastic. It started out in the 40s as a country bar. Wow. And everybody played there, like Hank Williams. Stop and Tom you Connor. Can't name, right? yeah. You cannot name a country star that did not play there. Like the classic country artists, they all played the Horseshoe. Hmm. Yep. And Glenn likes their debut album. I did like their debut album. It sounds man. Good. Yeah, it's man. Yeah. I did sub to you, Glenn. Why? I'm not sure. <laughs> Most people are like that. They don't quite know if they made a, a good decision. Chewing hides the sound is good. But I always do, but it's after after I uh, I'm done the live chat. Yep, stomp and Tom. Tom yeah, he's a legend at the horseshoe. This is for Glenn, as he said to blow it out. Yes, I'm not a big fan of Heart. I'm not either. You know, too too commercial. I mean, early on they were good. But... Yeah, I understand why people like them. Yep. And Boy Dukes with Ted Nugent. Wow, that is an odd pairing. That <laughs> is, yeah. Very odd. I would have I would have uh saw Hall and Oates then left. <laughs> Stomp and Tom is great. I've been to PEI to Stomp and Tom's uh, Skinner's Pond. I've been to his his museum. Hmm. He was popular oh, here in Canada. Canada. A really popular TV show in Canada for years and years. And people yeah. like, I think Gordon Lightfoot maybe got a start there. And Anne Murray. Anne and Murray, yeah. You know? Well, I think that's about it, Glenn. You think you're done, Larry? I'm done. I want to eat. Okay. I'm not eating till 6 o'clock, Larry. What are you having for dinner? Uh, chicken stir fry. Oh, we're having pasta tonight, Larry. Yeah. One of my Is it favorites. gluten free? Yeah. Yeah, they just went too to commercial. Michael, thank you for dropping by. Thanks, Michael. Give people a chance to say goodbye and go away and uh I have a name of Molly Hatchet. I don't know if I've ever heard Molly Hatchet. Oh, Al D. Neal is such a great guitar player in Renaissance. What a great horrible programming, but yeah, what a interesting two interesting bands diametrically opposed. Oh, it's saw Tommy Hunter in the 60s with my parents. Wow. Thank you, Ralph. Thanks, Atkins. Ralph. This was fun. Thanks, guys. Goodbye. Good night. Now it's time, time to, to say, say goodbye night. night. Good night. Sleep tight. Dream sweet dream. Or aren't we good together? We just need to like get a little more organized with who's singing. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Thanks, Thank everybody. You, Jamie. Uh, peace all. Peace, y'all. Peace Thank out. Thanks. Pleasant. Thank Valley you, Art. A good and night. Reviews. Yes. My favorite Beatles song. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Hey, Larry, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Bye.